God bless my brothers and sisters. Uh, the Lord has been sharing a lot of things with me and I'd like to uh, share these things with you. Um, I wanted to give you guys something that the Lord had given me. He put it on my heart. It was like a couple days ago and I've really been feeling this in my spirit. And so I'm going to read this to you and um, I pray and hope that you listen and, you know, just let the Lord speak to you. You know, always go to the Lord before you do anything. Even even when you hear something, you always want to go to the Holy Spirit, go to the Lord, and just to verify and make sure that it is correct and that it actually is Him before you, you, you do anything. So, I want to read this to you. I'll start off real quick with a prayer like I, like I like to do, you know, just in case for, if anybody needs it anyway. So, I thank you, Father God, for anybody who's listening. And the people who are listening right now, Father, I pray that you bless them with this word. And I pray that they listen and don't take offense to it, Father God, but they hear your your voice and what you want them to hear through this message. And I ask that you bless the people who are listening to it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So this, this, I've been, I've been feeling this in my spirit and I just woke up one morning and this it was just there and I just started to write and as I wrote I just kept getting more and more and more as the Holy Spirit gave and I'll start reading it don't mind me if I'm not looking at you all the time but so husbands and wives brothers and sisters mothers and fathers children and friends we are all going through something right now at this moment in this season I would like to share with you what I believe what is happening right now in the spirit to our families a lot of families are under attack. A lot of marriages are under attack. A lot of jobs are under attack. A lot of finances are under, atta are under attack also, which is true. Things in the past are resurfacing, resulting in arguments and divisions in the household, which is true. Children are not listening. Children being disobedient to their mothers and fathers, keeping their focus on games and television and their cell phones, not realizing the idols that they have placed before God, all a plan of the enemy to keep you or keep them out of focus and off God, like off focus and not paying attention to God on mean, meaningless things. It's getting more and more difficult to, to talk to them or even to get them to listen. And we as parents need to stop what we are doing and what we have been doing and ask ourselves a very important question. Where did we go wrong? Now I ask myself that same exact question. Where did I go wrong? And keep listening. The world around us has taken the man's role as a leader and as a husband and as a father and belittled him to almost nothing. Today's version of a father figure and role model in the home is vacant and not present. Well, I'm here to tell you with the breath that's in my lungs that the Lord God has given me that I decree and declare that order be brought back into my home. And I pray that you're saying the same thing, that order. We declare, declare and decree that order be established in your home. For the father to take the role and the order and responsibilities as a man and as a husband and as a father to do what God has called him to do. To build not only his life on the foundations of the word of God, but his marriage and his family. To not only protect them, but to teach them the commandments and the orders that God has placed in his word for his children. It's time, men of God, to rise up and take the role that God has placed in every man. See, each man has a role that God has called you to do. To be the head of the household. Keep listening. And it's also time for the woman, the women, sorry, the women to stop trying to be both mother and father to their children. Now listen to this. Unless the man is absent, but allow the Holy Spirit to help guide you, who the woman or man, if you don't have that other person to help, ask the Holy Spirit to help guide you with the raising up of your children. But this is for the mothers. To allow their husbands to be the fathers that God has called them to be. And for wives to work with their husbands and husbands to their wives. Hand in hand, being obedient to the word of God. And in the role in which he has called you yourself 
yourselves, I put both of you, that's yourselves, both of you to do one to another. It's not only time to listen to what God's word says, but it's actually time to put it into play. Okay? Colossians 3, 1 to 25, 1 through 25, read the whole thing. Ephesians 5, 21 to 33. 1 Peter 3, 7. Now I can read these to you. Now, the key is walking not only in the ordinance and commandments, but most of all. Listen to this. This is key. Walking in love with one another, as Jesus said. He didn't say he commanded. He said, this is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. That's John 15, 12. And then there's another one, John 13, 34. Again, you can just read the Bible, read the word of God, and you'll, you'll get that download at, as you, as you read, you, you'll, you know, the more you seek, the more you'll find. Keep listening. It's time to change the way we do things. It's time to change the way that we think. It's time to live for God 100%. Families coming together in repentance and prayer, asking the Holy Spirit to help guide us, removing any and all things that are in our homes and in our bodies that we exalt exalted higher than God. Many of us have placed things above God. We have placed many things above God. It's time to get things back into order. It's time to get our households back in order. Too long that this world system has corrupted our family in the way that God has placed the family together. The world has destroyed. We have allowed this world to destroy our families. So listen to this. <clears throat> I'm going to read this again. It's time to change the way that we, we do things. It's time to change the way that we think. It's time to live for God 100%. Families coming together in repentance. See, I seen my family, my children, my wife. This is a vision that I seen. I seen us all on the floor just kneeling down and just, just repenting for whatever it was that we did. I saw this and I said, you know, we got to do this. We got, we, I have to do this. I have to save my family. I can't save my family, but I can lead my family in the direction and and train them up the way that God wants me to. Because as a man, it's my responsibility to not only provide for my family, but also to bring them up in the word of God. Um uh, 100% families coming together in repentance and prayer, asking the Holy Spirit to help guide us. A lot of times that we don't ask the Holy Spirit to guide us. Removing any and all things that are in our household, our homes, our bodies, that we have exalted higher than God. Remembering the promises that God has for those who follow Him and His ways and who are, or, and who are obedient to His ordinance. It's time to hop off the crazy carousel cycle. This is what I wrote. It's time to hop off the crazy carousel, uh, carousel ride that keeps, uh, keeps us on repeat. And now it's time to allow God in our lives and allow him to direct our paths. It might seem scary at first because a lot of times, you know, doing new things. A lot of people do not like to do new things, but I think it's time. It might seem scary actually to follow God with all that we are. And not knowing what will happen. But trust and believe. And this is what I will. Trust and believe that through the journey. That he will never leave you. Nor forsake you. And that's in his, that's in his word. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And that, 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 that's what it is. We are definitely going through the tests and trials. We're definitely going through tests. And we're definitely going through trials. And things are definitely being resurfaced. But everything is in God's plan to help build you up, to help build us up and allow it allows your faith in him to grow more and more. And that's the best part about it is, is everything that we're going through right now in these moments, in this time is basically to it's a wake up call. It's a it's a wake up call for you to. For you to really think about why every why is all this stuff happening? Why? It's happening for a reason. Let me tell you something about God. And I love this about God. God, I always say this. God is the master orchestrator. He is the master 
orchestrated. He he he'll pull he'll pull thirty people from twenty different places and bring them all together, and all their different stories all line up on how they got brought together. And nobody could have done it but God. He's the master orchestrator. So me reading this, and and I say this not to offend, but it doesn't even matter. Even if you get offended, some people need to get offended, to be honest with you. Some people need to get offended on what certain things that they hear that the word of God, because if you're getting offended, clearly it's hitting, it's striking something that's, it's going on in your home that, you know, it's time to admit, it's time to cry out to God and ask God for help for these certain things that we go through. And another thing is for the women. And th this wasn't to bash women because there are certain scriptures. And again, I gave you a couple of them for what the men should do to their wives, for men to love their wives as Christ loved the church, but for women to be submissive. That's not laying down and bowing down to your husband, but in, in a sense, it's being his helpmate. It's not one over the other. You guys are one together. You guys were two. When you first met, you were two, but when you got married, you became one. So because you became one, there's a scripture verse in there. It says, leave your mother and father and, and cleave to your wife. That's the things that we need to do as men is you need to leave your family, put everybody aside, cleave to your wife, but not only cleave to your wife, but also allow God to start to build your foundation. Allow God to run your life. Put down your wants, your needs, men. Listen, put down your wants and your needs and start seeing what God wants and what he needs of you and allow the Holy Spirit to direct you and guide you in, in how to raise up your family, how to raise up your children. A lot of people have allowed their children to get away with everything. And they feed into these kids. These kids today, they're lazy. And I speak of my, my own. They're very, I, I noticed they're very lazy. But it's, it's, it's this generation. What are we allowing them to do? Like with the internet and stuff like that. And you can do whatever you want, but go to God. Go to God about it. And you can see, you know, you 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 shut the internet off of these kids in dramatic meltdown. They don't, they, they lose it because it's become their God. We have allowed men, we have allowed our households to get out of control. It's time. It's time to stand up and it's time to take back control of your home. It's time, not not doing it in an aggressive way, but allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you in what you need to do in order to take back your home. Because our homes have been under attack. Our marriages have been under attack. Let me tell you something. By you standing up and saying, hey, I'm going to be the man that God had called me to be. You're going to get backlash. Of course you are. You, you think the devil's just going to bend down for you? No, it's not going to happen. But guess what? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So it doesn't matter. You're going to find, you're going to get that backlash. You're going to, you're going to have little, but do not fall into the traps and the tricks of the enemy. You need to learn not to fall into it. If you know that it, something's going to cause an argument, or even if it does, what I always said this, I always said this, when somebody is coming at you aggressively, the best way to respond is not to respond because you got to realize that something is causing this person to act out. You could say, you could say nothing. It could be something godly. Something is causing that person to react to what you said, or even react to what's inside of you. Because remember, it's the things that are inside them that doesn't like what's inside of you. So if God is living in on the inside of you, if Jesus, if you've given your life to Jesus Christ and you chose to follow him, he lives in, on the inside of you. So what's in the, what the darkness is inside that person doesn't like what's inside of you. So the best way not to respond, the be that's the best way not to respond, not to feed these things. Because the second that you start acting like the world and you start acting as what they do, you're going to get that same, you're going to, you're going to get that, it's going to be that. But if you don't do any of that, then guess what? They have nothing to eat and then it dies down. Now, it's not completely gone because Jesus is the only one who can set these people free. And what I've realized is that a lot of these things and what, what the Lord was, was, was saying this, I'm going to read this. 
things of the past are resurfacing. And result, they could be things that had been washed away clean. But these things are being brought back up again, resurfacing to cause arguments and division. This is a tactic that the enemy is using to cause division in your household, in my household, in our households. It's time to put your foot down. It's time to stand up. Be the man and woman of God that God had called you to be. Stop arguing with one another. Come together and start to raise up your children in the things of God. Not putting the world system above God, but putting God above the world system. You understand? It's putting God above the world system where he is. He rules and reigns above all things. And we need to we need to observe and we need to study and we need to spend time with the Lord, casting aside all things, all things, all things. Are you listening? All things, all things that have the, the potential to become a God that we've put in above God. Cast all those things aside and start seeking the one and true heavenly father. God the Father, time is running out.